question and continue looking at partial products, but this time we're going to be looking at partial products with three and four digit numbers by a one digit number. We're going to look at the area model. The area model reminds us of our partial products. So if we're looking at three times 247, we would use our area model to actually record the parts of this multiplication problem. Three times 247. We're breaking the numbers down into their place value parts, just like we did when we were multiplying two digit by one digit numbers. And we begin to multiply, and we're thinking as we're multiplying, what are the things that we're doing? We're recording our multiplication. So we're doing three times 200, and we're going to put that in our area model. Basic facts, three times two is six, and we have two zeros that belong here. We continue on with three times 40, and we're thinking about our basic facts. Three times four is 12, we have one zero, and then we're gonna multiply three times seven. And three times seven is 21. So when we are writing and recording our partial products, we need to add them together after we record. So we have 600, 120, and 21. These are our partial products. We want to make sure that we are using what we know about multiplication and partial products to get our total product. So we simply add. 741 would be our total product for 3 times 247. Let's look at another example. This time we're going to use the area model and we're going to multiply a four digit number. We're going to multiply 5 times 3,468 when we're looking at this problem. We're going to use the same thought process that we used when we were multiplying by two digit by one digit number and the three digit by the one digit number. So the area model serves the purpose of reminding us what our partial products are. So we're going to record as we're thinking about what it is that we are doing. And we're going to put them in the actual area model. So we're going to start with 5 times 3,000 this time, because that is what we are looking at. We're doing 5 times 3,000. Okay, 3,468. Those are all of our parts of this multiplication sentence broken down in expanded form or in their place value parts. And we multiply. So we're going to multiply 5 times 3,000. So we are recording. This is what we're actually thinking as we're multiplying. We're thinking 5 times 3,000. Basic facts, 5 times 3 is 15. And we add our three zeros to get 15,000. Then we're going to multiply 5 times 400. We'll continue on with our basic facts. 5 times 4 is 20. Remember that 20 has its own zero, and we still need to add two more zeros. And then we're going to multiply 5 times 60. And we're going to do basic facts. 6 times 5 is 30. Again, 30 has its own zero, so we need to remember to add another zero. And then we're going to add 5 times 8. And 5 times 8 is 40. And all of these are partial products. So that's what we're doing, partial products. So we simply need to add all of our partial products together. So we're going to have 15,000 plus 2,000 plus 300 plus 40. And we add them together. We have 0, 4, three, seven, and one. So we have 17,340 as our total product for five times 3,400 
and 68. We're going to try a couple more, but this time we're going to take away the area model. We just need to know what we're thinking. We're thinking about our place value parts, and that helps us when we are doing the multiplication of these numbers. So we're multiplying 471 times 4. We are thinking 400 times 7, because that 4 is in the 100 place, so it's really not a 4, but 400. We're thinking, we're thinking 70 times 4. Okay, this should actually be a 4. So let's make this a 4. And not a 7. Okay. So 400 times 4 is what we're thinking. This 4 is really a 400 because it's in the hundreds place. 70 times 4, the 7 is really 70 because it's in the tens place. And we're going to multiply the 1 times the 4. That's what we're thinking. So we do all of these partial products and we line them up. So we do 4 times 4, looking at our basic facts, is 16. Remember, that's really 400 times 4. So we need to make sure we have our two zeros. Then we multiply 70 times 4. So 7 times 4 is 28. And we have a zero. And then 1 times 4. And we simply add these together. This is 4, 8, 8, 1. 1,884 is what we would get for 471 times 4. One more example. And this time we're going to multiply a four-digit number by a one-digit number. And we're going through those same processes of thinking 2,000 times 6. So remember, this is really 2,000. So 2 times 6 is 12. It's our basic facts. And we need to remember this is 2,000. So we're going to have three zeros here, 12,000. Then we're going to do 100 times 6. 1 times 6 is 6. It's our basic fact. And we put our zeros. Then we're going to multiply 70 times 6. 7 times 6 is 42. And we have 0 that we need to remember to add. And then 3 times 6, which is 18. And we add these all together. 8, 3, 10, 3, and 1. So we have 13,038. And this is a way that we are working with larger numbers by a one-digit number. So remember what we're thinking when we're looking at each of these digits. 2,170, and then the 